read it later. But essentially my thought process going into today, extremely large range yesterday. The only thing that my thought process was, was looking at the daily. If we were to get back inside this previous day high and stay below it, then we could drop, right? But if we stay outside of that, we're coming back higher, right? So I'm not trying to fight the trend, but I am looking for the possibility of shorts into the previous day range. And generally with that, looking at the upper 50%, right? So to there, to there, right? Kind of before a fair value gap forms. So just with that idea in mind, we're on replay. And the first thing everyone notices is this SMT on the high, right? Cool. So understanding that, um, 8.30, let's see. Eight thirty manipulated up. I uh, didn't wake up with my alarm, so I was actually in the shower eight thirty, or I would have shorted right here. Right, eight thirty provides the manipulation. Right, continue higher. I mean, manipulation, and we get the distribution down. Right, cool. So I missed that. I didn't want to chase anything. Um, oops like that. So really my draw, I was looking at these lows here, right? The only thing is the opening gap for ES was a lot higher. Um, where was it? Right here. Right? So it's a lot higher. We already went below it. Um, but main thing is miss that short. This was going to be my final TP. So when we get down to here, let's see. Oops, went one too far. Let me get down to there, right? The main thing I'm noticing is if I'm anticipating price to reach for this low, right? That was what I was looking for. When I see a candle closure like this, right? And this little internal SMT from there to there, right? I'm anticipating a retracement, right? And so all I mean with a retracement is I'm anticipating price to just reach up into this fair value gap or into previous range, right? So I'm anticipating that. And I prefer to trade retracements or um, this reversal. I mean, like a retracement into a previous range. I don't like to trade out of the range, right? And let me explain this. If I'm going to be trading, I'm sure many people try to short this fair value gap to these lows. You have to be correct on your bias, right? You have to be correct to to profit on that, right? Right, because if it just goes higher, you're stopped out. Now, if I'm trading this move up into the previous range, price can go here, I'd still make money. Price can go here, I'd still make money. That makes sense? So, well, after this candle closure here, so I waited for nine, then I dropped down to the lower time frames. A little bit messy, but I'll explain it. Really what I was looking for was I was looking for price to close over this, right? Reach down, create an order block. Here I would look for the mean threshold of this order block to hold, if we would have gotten that closure, um, to continue higher. <clears throat> but we didn't get that, right? And I'm just going to kind of skip ahead there. Now this is kind of like a higher risk entry, um, but where are we? 916, we should be at. I was really trying to play into my anticipation of the new five minute candle, right? So 920, we get a new five minute candle, the new five minute candle making that retracement higher, right? So really I wasn't looking to trade until right here, right? And from here, I see this little tiny SMT. That is enough for me. And then I just entered here. I stopped there. I took some partials here, right? Part of my position, I scaled out more. And then my final uh, scale was just at 929 prior to the open. Um, so we look there, right? And here we finally get that order block validation. And then right is here was my last scale, right? When we hit 930 and 830 open. And that's what I mean, reaching back into opposing arrays. So 
then I say, okay, if we get this closure, um, right, then we're likely to get an inversion, right? Because we closed over this, 930 is going to be the new 15 minute candle, new candles, right? New 30, everything. So if this is going to be an inversion, what do I anticipate? 930 retracement. If we hold in this area to then go higher, right? And this is where I use just previous order blocks, right? Um, because if this one's going to fail, it'll be used as support to go higher. So then on the lower time frame, I was kind of going insane this morning. Um, I'm just looking for this order block formation. Right. And really, I just kind of went in early and took a short right in here. This was just like a scalp one to one. <clears throat> and I was trying to target here. Right. And this is where if you saw in chat, my computer and everything froze up. So I didn't get to take any profit or reverse my position in here on the inversion. Right. So then it just came back up, stopped me out break even, which is fine. Luckily, I had a stop loss in place. Um, but then if we go back to the 15 minute, you can see we get that inversion to continue higher. I don't know where we are right now, but we're probably still up where right? we come back in the previous range. Nice. So still that SMT is holding. So, that inversion is still holding. So now we're just kind of trapped, right? So. Oh. My bad. We would be up in this range, but we had 10 a.m. news. Right? Oh, it's not even happened yet. I don't know. I guess we just had a fat drop before the news. Kind of unusual. But hopefully that made sense. Um, let's see. What time do you normally look for SMT in the morning? Dude, I, uh, I look for SMT at all times of the day. So like when I hopped on today. It was pretty obvious that we took this high here at 8.30, and ES didn't. So that's why my eyes were looking here, because 8.30 manipulation up to continue higher. If I had a different daily bias going in, then, um, yeah, it would have been a different plan. Uh... Yeah, can you can you stop asking for money? Um, it's not what this server is for. Uh, yeah, I kind of have a neutral bias, um, and the main reason for that is generally after a massive range day, right? Unless we make this wick pretty early into Asia, London, start to trend higher, um, like you know these previous trending days. I don't expect a, a whole lot. Um, we already reached. Did we reach into the fair value up? Yeah, we already reached into there. So now we're at equilibrium, essentially, almost, of this previous range. Can you see that? So. That makes sense. Can't hear the stream? Um, I don't know, man. Wish I could help. You might have deaf in them. But yeah, pretty neutral bias today. It's it's more so leaning bullish, um, just because we had a reversal, continuation, continuation, right? Normally how it goes. Um, but since we are already retched now into this previous range, opposing PD arrays or a PD array that could frame a weekly reversal, now I'm not really interested until I see how today closes um, hourly chart, daily chart. If we're going to frame something back to the downside, or if we're going to reach back into here, or continue higher, or just, it all, it all depends on the daily closure for me in hourly chart. Um, I recorded it so I can post it up somewhere. I don't know. Let me check indices chat. No. And those of you asking, like, why... Like, why exactly on that time? Well, new five minute candle, right, can provide that. So, the main thing I was, I didn't really say it. I, I watch a lot of time frames at once and don't mark up a lot because my 
my brain just processes it. I was looking at the, the CE of this little wick, right? Mainly on the 15, right? And then when we get a new candle, there we go. So, and now we're back into previous range, which, let's see here. It's not even like a clean range to consolidate in either. So, it would have been a lot better of a consolidation if we would actually, yes, has it probably. Nope. Would have been a lot cleaner of a range if we would have taken this low, then made this high. Then you have a, a dealing range to base it off of. Right here, it's you don't really have much. Very sloppy. Stop trolling. All right. Please, y'all don't. Dude, stop. Stop coming in here and asking other people for money. Lots of other people still have problems too. They're working through it. If he says another thing, I'll ban him, but uh, can you explain more on the SMT? Need the SMT on the trade. Oh, I mean, that's just more so an understanding of the time openings and closes, right? So. When we go down into here, right at 9.19, 9.20 opens and forms, we have a new five-minute candle, and I was just anticipating that to come up, and I was willing to risk, I mean, what was it, like, five points? It was like six-point stop loss. <clears throat> so. But. See how all the, the time levels are right around each other? It's usually an indication of a doji day, right? Because if price is going to, I'll just explain this real quick and then I'll hop off. If price is going to trend up, you know, something like that, whatever. We'll have our midnight and 1800 open in here, 830, 930, right? We'll trend higher. So for example, I go back to a day like yesterday, right? And go to a 30 minutes so you guys can visualize it a little better. Right? We'll let those times load on there. They're gonna load. Yeah, we got midnight, 8:30, New York. They're all just kind of trending up. So indication of a trend. We go to today. Where are they? They're all at the same spot. So not really a doji day. I mean, we did have a smaller wick, so that's what made me lean more bullish, but just it doesn't tell me that like price is going to trend right off the open. So <clears throat> continuation is easier than a reversal. Yeah. I mean, here, ready? I mean, today's not a great day of it, but like what is easier to trade, you know, this reversal in here or this continuation move? If I do more, right? Like easier to play a reversal or just these continuation moves where they just drops, you know? But like today, that's why I'm leading more bullish because on the hourly chart, do we have anything telling reversal? No, we don't. All this is is higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, right? So I was mainly wanting to see a higher low put in here to then go higher, right? Because I explained this in my new video and actually just made the PDF on, but when I'm trending in one direction, I want to see sweeps creating high resistance liquidity, right? Versus when I see no sweeps creating low resistance liquidity. You know what I mean? So we'll see what happens. Let me mark out one thing. Yeah. Probably better on like YM even. Jeez, man. What the? I mean, that's a pretty, pretty clean reversal day, if you ask me. Right? So, is it easier to trade this? I mean, obviously, pretty clean lower time frame reversal in there. But is it easier to trade this or the day following? I mean, you'll see a big wick on here, right? Or the days following. Obviously, YM is the weakest. So, but man, that's actually clean. 
So we have a higher time frame imbalance in here. Right. So. That's kind of nice. Anyways, hope you learned something. I'm going to hop off, go eat some, uh, some breakfast. Also, last thing I'll say. On the open, let's see if I can find it. If you were watching the open live this morning, hard to explain this stuff in hindsight. And three, I don't know if you can. Anyways, while these candles were forming, ES was like all the way down here, right? While NQ was higher. Well, that's because we're on the exact same chart. Nice one. Thick. All right. Just getting rid of all those. Anyways, um, off the open, you can see it pretty clearly now. ES was making a down close candle, and Q was making an up close candle, right? So you know one of these is lying, right? You know what's either gonna be ES is lagging behind to go higher, or NQ is lagging behind to go lower, right? So that's something you guys can study if you want, but um, raisin brain, get your fiber. In. No, I'm probably gonna have salmon. Salmon and some, I don't know, I can post this if you guys want. I don't know how much value is actually in it, but I can, I can drop it on the, the second channel if you want. AMD on gold. So, nice. Man, look at that uh, little SMT there. Lower time frame one while we were talking. And if looking long, which one does it? likely makes sense in the short term in Q, right? Because of its strength, you can kind of see it. So. Dang. What an L. Long right here. That's nah, just kidding, it's not an L, but target, I think my final target was like right there. Would have been 27R. <laughs> Alright. Um, 2T Discord lives. So yeah. I'll drop it in there. Uh, you said gold? Let me take a look at gold real quick. Right. I haven't looked at gold. Yeah. Um, with gold here, the first thing I notice is... I don't know if we have SMT on these highs, but failure swings, right? We're in a trend up, so unless I expect this to be the reversal point, I'm just anticipating a reach into previous range to continue higher. We have a weekly fair value gap we just dropped into. It goes that one. And then we made this candle, right? So ideally, if this is the reversal, I'd want to see price hold up 50% of this wick. That makes sense. So. I can go back to another example that's very similar. Um, if you guys remember DXY, I called it out on this day here. This one's more similar, and I prefer it just because it actually has more context to me, reaching into previous range. Sweep, sweeps again. That's your three drives, right? One, two, three. Um, and then we form this little hammer candle, looking for 50% of it. And then that's what I called out. And then we had news to continue us higher. So that's generally the protocol I go through when I see a long wicked candle like that. For instance, we can go find one on NQ here. Um, let me see. Can't remember the last one I exactly used. I mean, we can just use this one for an example, but sweeps the high, makes a wick. Want to see it hold the lower half of that wick, right? And why is that? Well, if you understand what a wick is, it's this is a time aggregation, right? So that's a period in time, which means a day. So that means you never have a, a different amount of time. If you create a wick, it means price went up and then all the way back down, right? So we have aggressive up, aggressive down. That creates imbalances in here. Right, or inefficiencies. So if we drop back 
two in here. And we go to something like a 15 minute. Or we'll go like an hour. Probably be better. You can see how we have aggressive up, aggressive down. We have inefficiencies in here. And it holds the inefficiencies to continue lower. Not the best example. Honestly, you should probably just go to DXY. So this one again. Right, upper half of that wick. You can see. What is the wick? Aggressive down, aggressive up. Marking out this inefficiency in this order block should hold price. So then you can see it from the daily chart by anticipating something like that, right? At right there. There we go. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, he has once hindsighted a 20 cent. <laughs> no, I think the most I've like actually traded is like 20, 20 hours. Like in a, in a single trade. But I don't really care to do that anymore. Um, like if I'm scalping, I'm lowering my risk down because I'm taking higher trade frequency. Um... Well, so like I said, you're 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 trying to. What did I say about reversals versus? You're, you're trying to say this is a market maker buy model right here. I would rather not care to catch this move here, and not trade the reversal, catch the continuation. I don't know. Most people would be way better off doing that because what happens is they try to catch this reversal, they get stopped out. Oh, it's doing it now. They try to catch this reversal. Now it's three drives. They're like, okay, I give up. Then it goes, and they're like, well, I was right, but why did it stop me now? The market hates me. No, the market doesn't hate you. You're just trying to catch a reversal. Uh, yeah, I think focusing on one pair is pretty good to start. But pretty clean on the H1. Yeah, but I would still rather let it trade away. You have consolidation, some sort of manipulation to go. I'd still rather let that trade away and then catch like a, a redistribution in this area. Our time frame imbalance, like right here. I mean, like we should have one. Yeah, sorry, I misdrew it. Oops. There. No. I don't know. A lot of time I was trying to the candles because I know that's going to be the, the low in the fair value gap. I just thought it was going to be that high, but but anyways, we'll see. Yeah, cool. Let's see if there's any uh, cool cool stuff going on in the currencies market. So AUD JPY. Making moves, looks like. I'll pull that up. Okay. Nice. Trending up. What does it do? Sweeps out these lows. Makes this. Want to see it hold at least the upper half. Trade the reversal day, or what's easier? The continuations. Where's the target? Buy side liquidity. You know, broad information. Looks like that. Go down to an hour, right? There we confirm it. London makes it low. New York continuation higher. Pretty sure people probably traded that somewhere in there. Pretty easy trade to get into the higher time frame trend. What's the next day? Okay. London, late London makes this low. And then we have looks like AUD news or something. Continue higher. And we go hit buy side. There's your market maker model. If you're wondering how I did that, maybe I'll make a video on it. All I was looking for is the weakest and strongest pairs, right? So when I see AUD take this, right, I know there's strength in that. Where is the weakness? Well, yen has been dropping pretty hard. 
and I look at dollar, dollar's in a consolidation after this higher range. So that's why crosses are going to move better. Um, so let's see. How long have I been trading for? Like three or four years? I, I don't know. I'd have to go look at my like brokerage to see when I actually started. I can't remember the exact day or year. I know it's been at least three. Uh, SMT on gold. Use silver. Favorite daily profile. Um, New York reversal. I don't know. New York reversal gets built into your heads after studying the 2022 mentorship. Um, continuation is probably the easiest, but most people struggle with that because they don't understand how to play continuations. Because if we go back, nice. See how we keep coming back to these times? Here's an example of like, I'll just draw it out. Let's see. Oops. There we go. This is like when volume profile would work, right? When price is balancing like this, going to make pretty great graph. Yeah. So, drawing that out. But it's going to look like every time I was just showing you. But on days where it balances, right, it comes back to this like value area or where 70% of the data lies. Not quite 70%, 68, because you have 34 here, 34 here. That's just math stuff. But when we exit this range, unless we're going to start a trend, where do we come back to? Here. And if we go back to that like value area, right? I don't know if I have it turned on because the value area. There we go. Right? There's our point of control. So when price leaves this range, if we're going to balance, it's likely to come back to this area. You can see that without actually drawing anything, just seeing how the candles form. Right. So, um, let's see. Last few questions, and I. Also, I'm tired of people trolling in chat, so I may just start muting people for like days or banning them. Uh, RTH gap. I don't personally. Um, you definitely can, right? But a lot of my analysis is based off the overnight session. So it doesn't really make sense if I'm using London's price action to anticipate New York. Why would I just get rid of it? Right? It's good to notice. Um, if I really want to notice it, I'll just pull up, uh, like, in this case, QQQ, pull that up, do the daily, right? There's your RTH. So that's what I do if I if I wanted to. Um, but you can see continuation, continuation here. We continue in the overnight session gap up, right? So any call premiums are up. So when you see that in the overnight session, you know people from previous days are probably likely taking a profit, right? So, but that's also why I mark out 930 because 930 is the uh, the open for QQQ, right? So if we go back to NQ, right, or 930, open at like a 15. Oops, that was way zoomed in. That New York open is going to be the opening price for the actual day. So that's why when we just looked at QQQ, it was sitting right on it. Um, I just showed you an MMXM example with uh, AUD JPY daily. Hourly gives the change in started total delivery. Now I know these following days, I'm just looking for a continuation of this high. That's when I use daily profile. So here we have a London reversal. New York retraces into the previous range to continue. Here we have London. No, that's like an early New York. Well, late London reversal, right? Continuation higher. Here looks like we had some Asian news, maybe JPY news. Um, continue higher, right? BPR. BPR. I don't know which one you want, but how? What makes you invalidated bias? Normally, my stop loss. 
but all right i am gonna hop off though i wasn't planning this i there's just a few questions in indices chat and it's easier to um do that also as i just spoke about we'll go to nq and you're stuck in ranges this is how simple it is the extremes right i just explained that with some standard deviation type stuff um but Uh, I stopped sharing that journal template just because it was it was just too much work to like deal with everything. Yeah, I'll drop the live. See which is weaker, which is much stronger. But anyways, hope you learned something. I mean, pound yen is probably good. This is my daily model. But yesterday I would have been looking at pound yen if I watched Forex anymore. We'll just look at it really quick. So this should be I had a nice daily move yesterday. And great, this is the last example we'll, we'll do. But I'm wanting to see price hold 50% of that wick. What do you notice? London holds 50% of that wick. There's your BPR, but why am I not interested in here? Well, if price reaches down into here, I'm, I don't really care for it because if it's not holding 50% of that wick, then it's more likely to fail, right? But that's why if I was gonna mark something up, it would be more so this, right? Or we have a lower time frame order block right here. And I can drop down and find it for you. Right. But without even looking at that, just the timing, London makes this low. Down close kick, down close candles into point of interest. It's closed over. What happens? We retrace into those. Move higher. Down close candle. Move higher. Pretty, uh, Pretty nice draw there, that high. Nope, wrong, wrong keyboard shortcut. That high. And then after a large range day, we'd anticipate just a continuation, at least for me, I would anticipate a continuation through this high and then just consolidation, which you can see is kind of what's happening. And then one second, Euro GDP, take a look at that. So Euro is actually stronger. So Euro JPY would have actually been a little bit better there on the strength side. Okay. There, those candles there. I don't know if it came back and retested that. It didn't. But anyways. <clears throat> um, I'm going to talk about that in a new video, but I'll see you guys later. Hope you learned something. Hit me in chat. If you have any questions, I'll upload this video. So, peace.